This episode of Internet Today is sponsored by Magic Spoon and by Honey. Hey, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, today is one of those ever-increasing number of days where it's imperative that we put the comedy on pause for a second and talk about something incredibly serious. Because yesterday, a leaked Supreme Court draft indicated that the court has voted to overturn Roe v. Wade, which, in an extremely simplified explanation, would essentially make legal access to abortion up to the individual states to decide. And a lot of states in this country already have processes in place that will make abortion illegal if and when Roe v. Wade was ever overturned. Uh, this would be the largest, most definitive step backwards in female reproductive rights um, pretty much ever in uh, this country, a country whose actual population overwhelmingly supports a woman's right to choose. Yeah, two to one. But also a country where right-wing politicians have been working feverishly for decades towards this goal, and uh, liberal politicians have, in many cases, simply stood there and allowed it to happen, which is incredibly frustrating, disheartening, and demoralizing to a majority of the people out there who did and continue to express what little power they have by voting alongside their beliefs. We did vote, by the way, so stop saying to vote more. Vote. Oh, yeah, let me go vote for, uh, who's this guy, Henry Queller in Texas? What is he? he, he Oh, he, oh, he, uh, he's anti-abortion. You want, Nancy Pelosi, you want me to vote for, for that guy? And the, you say that that will, uh, undo this. No, fuck off. So anyway, while a lot of the misplaced anger and reactions regarding this news seems to just be yelling at people to vote, uh, the, the old classic Dem strategy of belittling, uh, and, uh, just talking down to insulting the people you claim to desperately need the votes of. Uh, How's that fucking working out, you uh, pieces of shit? Also claiming that certain members of their own uh, constituency are uh, voting wrong or uh, yeah. doing it in a way that doesn't support them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get on our side. I mean, we're not going to do any of the things that you specifically want. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah. But if you don't vote for us, you are bad. To be clear, this is an extremely Republican and conservative problem. But yes, it is. Uh, the, fames have, the flames have been fanned by Democrats, and uh, they have essentially done nothing in certain scenarios where they could have done Something. I mean, the, the problem with all the politics in this country is that the Republicans have decades-long projects like banning abortion that they put all of their energy and money behind for lengths of time where it's like, that's never going to happen. They're throwing their money away. But eventually they get what they want. Whereas mm -hmm. the Democrats' strategy is uh, never really more than like a week ahead. Just uh, get, through the, get through the current week without uh, anything going too bad. Yeah. Uh, it helps to plan long term. Anyway, the simple fact is that... Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote in 2016, and the current president, the current House of Representatives, and the Senate is controlled by Democrats. So we did what we what you asked us to do, folks. Yeah, this was also the case during the Obama administration. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, politicians who could have and should have done more to stop this, even during prior administrations, and are actually currently able to codify Roe v. Wade if they just abolished the filibuster. Uh, yeah, if... Uh, anyway, let's look into what, what's going on and what led to this massive change in the personal rights of everyday Americans. So on Monday of this week, Politico obtained a draft opinion written by Justice Samuel Alito, which showed that the Supreme Court has voted to strike down Roe versus Wade uh, from the reporting. The draft opinion is a full-throated, unflinching repudiation of the 1973 decision, which guaranteed federal constitutional protections of abortion rights and a subsequent 1992 decision, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, that largely maintained the right. Quote, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start, Alito writes. We hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled, he writes in the document labeled as the opinion of the court. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. The immediate impact of the ruling, as drafted in February, would be to end a half-century guarantee of federal constitutional protection of abortion rights and allow each state to decide whether to restrict or ban abortion. It's unclear if there have been subsequent changes to the draft. And they add that, quote, no draft decision in the modern history of the court has been disclosed publicly while a case was still pending. And they're so mad about that. Yeah. This is pretty much worse than the actual capital insurrection, if you think about it. Uh, our norms, our precious norms. Yeah, uh, that, that quote continues. The unprecedented revelation is bound to intensify the debate over what was already the most controversial case on the docket this term. So, as is tradition. A lot of outlets and politicians are just way more concerned with the leak than the content of the leak. 
the Supreme Court itself released a statement confirming the authenticity of the draft, but also claiming that releasing it to the public undermined the integrity of their operations and that it was a betrayal to the confidences of the court. How dare you? Yeah. Uh, They love uh, lots of uh, talking heads and politicians are playing the victim card in all of this, uh, despite even mentioning what it actually... Uh, entails? Listen, we live in a very serious country where, you know, we have like elected officials, but the big decisions we leave to a council of wizards who, uh, who simply, we, they have the job for life and there's nothing you can fucking do about it. And, and sometimes uh, they refuse to step down, uh, yeah. freeing up a spot for a potential nominee who could have prevented this. Yeah, sometimes they're just such a girl boss that uh, the, qu- the consequences of their actions are uh, catastrophic. Thanks, Ruth. Anyway, we don't really know what to say other than the government making a detrimental decision that affects everyone in the country should be done in the light of day and not hidden from the people. Yeah, I don't think this is a scenario where you're like, oh, the leak is, oh, we got to find the leaker. It's so bad that this was leaked. Yeah, that's the real tragedy is the leak. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not to mention that the leak could have come from, I don't know, someone working with the Supreme Court that wanted public pressure to hopefully change these justices' minds, considering that access to abortion is overwhelmingly supported by a majority of people in this country and extends far beyond the fear-mongering that is used by conservatives who frame abortion as simply uh, killing and dismembering actual babies. Yeah, Uh, Women should have access to abortion regardless, uh, but there are plenty of other scenarios where abortion is difficult but necessary uh, for the the woman and has nothing to do with the fear-mongering extreme rhetoric spewed by the religious right the people women get ectopic pregnancies a lot which uh in a in a country where abortion is legal is a very easy thing to deal with um if you make it illegal it becomes a big fucking problem that could get a woman killed for a uh pregnancy that is never going to actually result in a real birth yes and again it is is the the Ginsburg thing is, I feel like we're almost absolving guilt from the conservative appointed judges, but we are not. Um, uh, well, they generally know when to retire. And uh, for some reason, the other yes, ones... Yes, conservatives uh, are lockstep in all of their decisions that led to this. Yeah. Uh, whereas... Uh, it's again, it's again, they have a coordinated fucking yeah. plan for what they want long term. Democrats do not. The, at best, you can say that their platform is maintaining the status quo and preventing the right from pushing things too far right. Yeah. Which, um, at, over time, results in things gradually going to the right, 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 to the right. You get it. Oh, it's like the opposite of the Elon Musk meme. Yeah. Yeah. That thing aged really, really well in the, like, four days since he posted it. Yeah. Um, anyways, this is all without mentioning, as pointed out now by the viral tweet from Takara Mollard. Uh, this is a decision that is happening in a, quote, Country with the highest maternal mortality rate, no paid maternity leave, no universal subsidized child care, no continued birth parent care, and frequently inaccessible mental health care. As we're all aware, because we constantly talk about the lack of uh, health care in this country. Um, your life is very valuable to us until the moment you're born. And mm-hmm. then you can go fuck yourself. I don't exactly. fucking care. Uh, it, it's been a viewpoint that has been beaten into the earth, but it is true that, you know, Republicans seem to not give a fuck what happens to people after they're born. Only that they are born, regardless of whether or not that is a healthy decision in any aspect to the parents. Now, in addition to all of this, the very specific wording used in the draft by Judge Alito also sets the stage for the court to potentially overturn things like same-sex marriage, because it is, quote, not deeply rooted in American history. Yeah, same-sex marriage, uh, segregation, interracial Interracial marriage. marriage. They're, They're coming for all of it. Great. Um, and so far, Biden's response has been that uh, he thinks Roe v. Wade is a good thing, but he's not prepared to make a judgment on whether the Senate should remove the filibuster in order to codify Roe v. Wade. So thanks for that help, Jack. Classic Democrat move, man. Someone should do something about this. Sir, you are the president. Ice cream cone. They, they all fucking do it. Gavin Newsom's like, someone should do something about the uh, what climate change is doing to California. I think someone should do something about this. You are the governor, sir. You are the governor. So, what can anyone do about this abortion thing? Uh, Well, it's extremely easy to feel uh, completely hopeless here, and you are absolutely justified to feel that way. And if if anyone yells at you that uh, you need to get up and get off your ass and vote right this second, you tell them, uh, well, there's not an election happening right now. I'll get around to that when the time comes. For now, I am hopeless and depressed, and you can fuck off with your concern trolling. Yes. Go away. Um, But yeah, it's also deeply frustrating that the blame is being placed on the voters for not uh, voting hard enough. 
uh, or that the the simple answer is just go vote because we have and we did. Yes. And and also like I, you know, the the Hillary people they're never gonna get over that shit. They they have a permanent terminal brain disease. But uh, it is fucking wild. It's like the biggest problem with the elections in this country for the Democrats is turnout. It's not uh, voters deciding to vote for the other team, which is actually a very rare phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's you are trying the the base that you are trying to motivate to come vote for you often has to in this country, unfortunately, set aside. Uh, they have to make plans. They have to make a fucking day out of it. Because and, voting day, election day is not a holiday and, for some weird and, fucking reason. Yeah, and that you need to motivate people. They're not going to just do it because, well, I guess I guess this time I'll vote for the Democrat. You need to give them a reason to get off their ass and go vote. Yes. Ah, so, yeah, the country has had a uh, Democratic majority across all branches of government at very specific, important times over the past decade and a half. Um, you know, it's more complicated than that, actually. But, you know, yep, here we are in this position. Um you know, it's uh, you look at you look at the Republicans and they're terrible, but you got to admire the craft when someone like Liz Cheney or Madison Cawthorn steps even slightly out of line. They destroy that person. Yes, because they have an agenda that they all fucking agree on. Whereas when you're a Democrat, you know, I guess we're pro abortion, but if you're not, that's fine. And we're not going to do anything about it. If you want to... In uh, fact, you can hold up the entire process yeah, by being one person. You can become the most important politician in the country because we're going to let you stay in our club, even though you clearly don't share any of our values. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it is just a shame that uh, every, every Democrat grew up watching fucking uh, The West Wing, which is a fantasy. And uh, the Republicans, they watched a lot of House of Cards. They took great notes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this is going to come down to having enough public outcry and shame and bullying politicians into actually doing something effective. Uh, or if you look at the example from other countries, hypothetically, um, going a little further than that. For some reason, America is the only country where uh, the, wor the, the worst you can do is, uh, you know, go go march. Um, well, we don't have <laughs> guaranteed health care and uh, a vast majority of the country is... Uh, in debt uh, severely to where one missed day of work could collapse their entire family. So one, uh, it's really one, hard. One to, police uh, nightstick to the yeah, face. Yeah, it can ruin your... It's uh, a risky endeavor, which uh, is a scenario that seems to be uh, made on purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at the same time, like, you know, you should be supporting advocacy groups that provide options and answers to women in need. Um, and those groups are all around. They've been around for a while. They know what they're doing. In the description below, you will find links to organizations to support at a state level. Uh, but we're also, we're gonna launch a fundraiser here on this channel through YouTube Giving for the next week where donations will go to the National Network of Abortion Funds and uh, we'll start things off with a $500 dono when the fundraiser goes live. Yeah, it's our first time trying it. It's a service that YouTube offers and they do, they actually don't take a cut of any of the, uh, oh. any of the stuff, it all goes straight to the organization. So I'm gonna try to launch it with the video. Um, it's a process. I looked at it earlier today, but uh, yeah, we'll get things started there. Uh, we'll do a $5,000 goal, see if we can raise some money. And uh, we appreciate it if you can. Uh, obviously, times are tough right now, so if you can't, it's literally not a big deal, but it's something that we can try to do to give back. So, but yeah, yeah you are, you are, uh, don't feel bad about being mad. Yes, you are allowed to feel very it's mad about It's a this. normal human reaction to terrible things. Yeah, and it's uh, okay to feel helpless because a lot of people do. But let's transition the episode from something incredibly serious over to another topic. Um, because transitioning out of stuff like that is very hard. We're just going to do, we're going to choose the dumbest, most inconsequential yeah. thing possible. And uh, we're going to- Did gonna... you hear the Met Gala theme this year was the Gilded Age? Met Gala Is that what we're going to talk about? The Met Gala? The worst possible time for the Met Gala to happen. But uh, anyways, uh, instead we're going to uh, talk about- uh, The Met Gala? No. No, we're going to talk about Vin Diesel instead. Oh, even better. The very predictable outcome of the recent news regarding the latest addition to the Fast and Furious franchise, Fast X, which recently, as you're aware, if you watched News Dump, lost its director, Justin Lin, a guy who was vital, or as vital to the success of this blockbuster franchise as nearly everyone else. Um, so let's, let's back up and let's go over what happened so far. Last week, it was announced uh, rather unceremoniously that Justin Lin was dropping from his position as director of Fast X, which wouldn't have been seen as 
very strange, except for two things. Production was already underway, with at least a week of filming reported to have taken place, and Vin Diesel had just released a video where he towers over Justin Lin and talks about how great things are going. Justin. You think this one's gonna live up to the hype? You think it's gonna be the best one? I guess so. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Lynn dropping out of the project a week after production began, that's a big enough red flag, but the announcement that he was giving up the director's chair just a day or so after uh, Vin Diesel posted a video about how great things were going on set with Justin looking extremely uh, uncomfortable, just weird, weird kidnap vibes yeah. throughout, uh, it makes the post look like a hostage scenario in, in retrospect, mm -hmm. which uh, I guess in, in some ways, it, it definitely it must have felt like it for yeah. Justin Lin. So uh, let's watch it again, just to refresh your memory, in case you missed News Dump last week or, or just want to bask in the uh, intense awkwardness. Especially of, in retrospect. Of Vin Diesel. Yeah. Here you go. What do you think, Justin? Week one. Just finish week one. How does it feel? Feels like the beginning of, uh, of an epic ending. Is it fair to say that this will be the best one? In my heart, yes. Oh! Okay, so right out the gate, the clip was strange, and it felt as though Justin Lin was uncomfortable. But when the news broke that he had left the film, it made the video seem like some kind of extreme manipulation on the part of Vin Diesel, who has a clear track record of using emotional manipulation publicly in the past, uh, specifically during his dust-up with former Fast and Furious star Dwayne Johnson. Um, come on, Dwayne. I know, I know we have problems, but do it for my children. They miss their Uncle Dwayne. You wouldn't want to upset my children, would you? Uncle Dwayne, please, <sighs> please, I want you to join Daddy's movie. He said, oh, he'll hurt please. me if you don't. <laughs> so now it appears that our intuition was dead on. because It is being reported that Justin Lin left the production specifically because of his interactions with Vin Diesel on set. Yeah. Uh, here's the Hollywood Reporter with more. Justin Lin had, quote, had enough. <laughs> enough of the constantly changing script. Enough of the process of making a fast movie. And enough of the managing from the movie's driving star and fellow producer, Vin Diesel. Multiple sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. Lin was handling writing duties on the movie and believed he had a locked script going into it. Universal and Diesel had other thoughts. A key location that had been secured was cut due to its Eastern Europe location amid the war in Ukraine. And the movie still hadn't cast one of its villains yet. The constantly moving target proved too much for seasoned Lin, who on April 23rd had a, quote, major disagreement with Diesel. The four-person meeting had begun with Diesel having new notes. It ended with a slam door. Justin finally had enough and said, this movie is not worth my mental health, says one source. Both Lin and Diesel declined comment for this story. A Universal spokesperson told The Hollywood Reporter, any creative differences leading to Justin Lin's exit were with the studio, not with fellow producers, cast, or crew. In the heat of the moment, Lin said he was through with the movie. The studio took him seriously, and by April 25th, a settlement was reached for Lin to exit the production. That's wild, because it's not like this is his first interaction with this cast and crew. No, uh, not he, at he's all. He's done, what, four? Uh, <laughs> five films, five films. Yeah. And I believe the most recent one as well, like literally yeah. the last one. For going back at least a decade, so. Yeah. Uh, was this boiling uh, under the surface over the course of multiple productions? I think just like we've honestly witnessed from the outside looking in is that I don't know for sure, obviously, but it looks as though um, the problem that Vin Diesel had with Dwayne Johnson and all of that going publicly and kind of making him and some of the other cast members look bad uh, really affected him and made him become overbearing when it comes to the production of these films. Yeah. And obviously it would be a nightmare to work with someone like that, especially when you're the actual creative vision behind it yeah. and a person who has been actually responsible for the success of the franchise, both in writing and directive vision, because the movie heavily relies on that and not so much the dialogue of one Vin Diesel. But he's an auteur. So that's my read on this yeah. is just that Vin Diesel, uh, of course, became more and more controlling of the project, especially with the passing. Uh, and then the dust up with Dwayne The Rock Johnson kind of probably sent it into overdrive. Anyway, the article talks about the pressure put on Lynn regarding the franchise, whose budget had ballooned in recent installments due to the increasingly outrageous settings, as well as a massive pay increase across the board for the returning cast. A cast that includes Vin Diesel, who has had growing power on set as the franchise grew in popularity over the past two decades. 
uh, their reporting continues. Diesel had become his own personality to be reckoned with at this point in the Fast franchise. He long ago had become the dominant force and was not afraid to flex his ample muscle. <laughs> <laughs> did, which he allegedly did not uh, build up enough coming on to set. Yeah, that that was another thing. Was, yeah. uh, like he, he showed up out of shape and not knowing his line. Those are rumors, but yeah. it, it, his ample muscle. Did Vin Diesel write this Hollywood Reporter <laughs> article? Uh, his, his big arms. <laughs> he could barely fit through the door. His giant bowling ball-esque biceps. Hey, uh, actually, it's untrue that Justin Lin slammed the door because the door was broken off by Vin Diesel unable to walk yeah. through it correctly because of his huge stature. Yeah, he's just, he's just He could not fit neither underneath the door nor through it because he's so tall he and so get off its frame. Yes. Uh, his clash with Dwayne Johnson led the former superstar wrestler to leave the franchise, even rebuffing public outreach. And the writing process for the movies was unorthodox, to say the least. Insiders say writers would pen action sequences, and Diesel would say yes or no to them, leaving to the director the job of making them fit. Or not, if Diesel changed his mind. <laughs> Quote, the whole process is a mosaic that never stops moving, says one insider who has seen up close the making of several fast movies. And finding a director for the franchise wasn't going to be easy. Quote, you need someone who can play ball with the studio, Vin, and the actors, notes an agency partner. You can maybe count on two hands filmmakers that can take on this challenge. Most filmmakers will file this under life's too short. I'm I, good. I'd rather not. Yeah. Yeah. Which I appreciate coming from someone in the industry just being like, nah, that's too much trouble. I'm going to just uh, live a carefree life instead. Not going to do it. Yeah. So there was, however, confirmation late last week regarding the person who is going to fill the spot, hopefully for the entirety of its production. And uh, that person is uh, Louis Letelier. Louis Letelier. Uh, there you go. Uh, who was behind the Clash of the Titans remake, as well as the Netflix Dark Crystal series, mm. but also the Transporter movies. Okay, that's kind of a fit. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, the last notch on his directing belt at least prov provides some confidence in helming Fast and Furious. Uh, still, we are wondering how long it will be before this guy appears in a Vin Diesel Instagram post about how great the shoot is going. Hey, Louie, get over here. Yeah. It's going pretty great, isn't it? Uh, we oui, win. Oui. Yes. I know in my heart that it is true. I need to go have a cigarette. <laughs> anyway, we do have more dumb, funny, stupid, surreal news for you coming up in just a second. But let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsors for supporting yeah. this show. Uh, starting with Magic Spoon. Yeah. Now, growing up, cereal is one of the best parts of being a kid. But then you realize, oh no, it's full of sugar and all this junk that you really shouldn't eat. No. But luckily, in steps Magic Spoon with a great tasting cereal that's got zero grams of sugar. 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in every serving. Mm -hmm. Also only 140 calories. With Magic Spoon, you can build your very own variety box and can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream. My favorite, cookies uh, and cream. Maple waffle, blueberry, and cinnamon, plus the newly reformulated honey nut flavor that will now be added to the Magic Spoon permanent collection. Ooh, I'm excited to try mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so um, again, this is my favorite. I've been snacking on it all day while writing the episode. Um, click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box and use our code today daily for $5 off. You can choose from the best selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry, and cinnamon. But wait, like we said, Magic Spoon is now adding Honey Nut to their permanent collection. So be sure to add Honey Nut to your custom box and try it out. Also, for our Canadian and British viewers, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Click the link below, use the code today daily for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash today daily to save $5 off your order today. And be sure to add that honey nut to your custom box. Nut. Nut. Today's episode is also sponsored by Honey. Oh, wow. <laughs> honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We all shop online. We've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I recently went shopping for Mother's Day, and um, I don't want to spoil it for my mom. She doesn't watch the show. Who cares? I got 20% off 
uh, like a comfortable like loungewear or like sleepwear kind of thing. Because mm. um, she likes to be comfortable after she gets off work. You gotta be comfortable. Um, so I got 20% off that from a uh, major clothing retailer. Uh, so that was a great deal, and just one of the many that I find through, uh, found through Honey. And Honey, of course, doesn't just work on desktop. It also works in your iPhone, too. All you have to do is activate it on Safari, on your phone, and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free. It installs in a few seconds, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We wouldn't recommend something that we don't use, so get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash itdaily. That is joinhoney.com slash itdaily. All right, back to the news now with another update to a story that we covered a while back about uh, two LAPD officers who were too busy playing Pokemon Go to actually solve crimes or assist members of the public while a robbery was actively taking place. Yeah. In case you missed it the first time, uh, here's a quick refresher. Two Los Angeles officers have lost an appeal and their jobs after an April 2017 game of Pokemon Go. Instead of responding to a nearby call, Louis Lozano and Eric Mitchell were caught searching for Pokemon characters through the Pokemon Go app according to a ruling this month from a California appellate court. Uh, so they were caught because a patrol supervisor saw their car near the location of the robbery, but they didn't respond to the call, uh, <laughs> claiming at the time that they didn't hear any requests because they were in a park with a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. uh, the supervising officer was skeptical, so he looked over the vehicle's uh, video recording and found that the officers were playing Pokemon Go the entire time that they should have been responding to the call. <sighs> Here's more from that article. The two had evidently heard the call but ignored it. In the ruling, Lozano was quoted saying, Ah, screw it, when debating if they should respond to the call. Nearby, a Snorlax, one of the Pokemon characters, was spotted, so the men were focused on capturing it. Evidence in the ruling notes that Mitchell caught the creature and exclaimed, Got him! <laughs> <laughs> now, in an update to the events, Vice has acquired even more transcripts from an internal affairs report that details the officer's entire, quote, harrowing Pokemon battle that played out while they were supposed to be working and responding to a robbery that was in progress, just apparently very close to them. Uh, here's just some of the transcripts. You can find the entire PDF over on Vice through a link in the description. Um, I'll be Officer Mitchell. You'll be Officer Lozano, okay? Got right. it? Snorlax just popped up. What? Where? 46th and Lamert. Remember where we were earlier? You went to go check the church? That's exactly where it's at. We've got four minutes. Then, after that, Tojetic just popped up. I think they were updating their server because I have to install the update. Why is it still green? Two minutes. And we'll get the same result as friggin' yesterday and it's gonna go blank and change into something else. There it is, it just popped up. Did it pop up for you? Nah. What's yours, 1876? Editors note this is a probable reference to the power level of the Snorlax the officers were chasing. Yeah, 1567. Then we gotta go get the Togetic. Got him, it's strong. They continued chasing the Pokemon in their patrol car, allegedly speeding through residential streets at certain points. <laughs> it should be to your left. There it is. Man, it's like white. You can't even see it. If I was driving around real fast, I wouldn't even know it was there. Don't run away. Don't run away. I buried it and ultra balled it, and it's still showing red. I know. Got it. You did it. Nice. This is a Togetic. Togetic. It's crazy looking. Still trying to catch it. Holy crap. Ultra Ball. I'm lucky right now I haven't really needed Ultra Balls. I have 250. Yeah, that's good. But what the heck, man? Holy crap, man. This thing is fighting the crap out of me. Do I have good stats at least? Decent defense blown away by stats. Officer Mitchell eventually captures the Pokemon. <laughs> Holy crap, finally. The guys are going to be so jealous. Let's go back to the 7-Eleven and sit there. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. <laughs> So despite the evidence stacked against them, the pair refused to admit playing Pokemon Go on the job. No, you don't understand. Your Honor, we were uh, hassling a homeless person. Uh, actually, they were doing that right before this. Yeah, so every, everything that sounds like we're trying to catch a Pokemon, that's actually us beating the shit out of uh, a homeless man for the crime of existing. Yeah, they basically, Which is fine. It's part of our job. Before the Pokemon Go thing, they had apparently just like actually hassled a homeless person and like kicked over his bottle of liquor and stuff. Because he's blocking where all the good Pokemon are hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, did you know that this is a gym for a game <laughs> that exists virtually online? Uh, so, quote, during testimonies of both Lozano and Mitchell, each denied playing the Pokemon Go game based on the following. The game requires walking, not driving to different locations, and that they were only monitoring a tracking application to catch mythical creatures. Lozano was on the force for 18 and a half years, and Mitchell was on the force for eight and a half years, the document said, and stated that his actions of catching a Snorlax were reprehensible and inexcusable, and that lying about his thrilling battle with Togetic showed poor commitment to leadership and lacked integrity. 
Lozano showed blatant disregard for the safety of the community and his co-workers because he was not interested in doing his job. Uh, the evidence, however, was damning, and Los Angeles eventually fired both Lozano and Mitchell. So, I mean, it's great that there was some justice done in this scenario, but on the list of things that <laughs> officers with the LAPD have the, been... The least bad thing that an LAPD officer has ever done. Yeah, pretty low uh, on the level of severity. Um, it, In fact, we would probably be safer as a city if every cop was just constantly playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. Instead yes. of their jobs. Um, they're... <laughs> These two were guilty of the crime of making their department look really, really stupid because yeah. they were playing a game for children while on duty. So that department, they decided to fire an 18-year veteran over it. Well, thank you for your service. Yeah. Not. I don't thank you for your service. Yeah. But right, uh, Bozo. Now they're going to have they're gonna have all the time in the world to dedicate fully to Pokemon Go, which is apparently still a thriving community, No, but not as big as it uh, was at the time. And they'll probably both get jobs like... Just in another SoCal city. But that's a reminder, like, if you uh, are in support of abortion rights, you need to Pokemon go to the polls. Pokemon go to the polls. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's check in on a member of the Internet Today rogues gallery that we haven't heard from in a while. Uh, not that he wasn't out there somewhere doing what he always does. It just became much easier to ignore him because everyone, even his own party and God King, seemed to have turned on him. We're talking about pillow magnate Mike Lindell, mm -hmm. who is still, still, apparently on a mission from God to overturn the 2020 election results in this year, 2022, yeah. while also running his own conservative television network, social media site, and we assume still selling the worst pillows you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, in the wake of Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter.com, we've seen a bunch of conservatives uh, returning to the site, uh, pretending that it was Musk's declaration that it would be the ultimate free speech zone that is what brought them back even though he's not in power. Or yeah, no, they, a lot of the claims are that they... Like, Elon that just unbanned me. Yeah, exactly. Like, he doesn't fucking work there anymore. So, yeah, most notably it was Tucker Carlson who acted as if Musk had unbanned him, but, you know, in reality, he simply did what he had been asked to do much, much earlier to get his account back, which was uh, delete the tweet that got his account suspended in the first place. Yeah, but while Carlson and a few other conservatives were merely suspended over tweets that broke Twitter's terms of service... Some people like my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, have actually been fully banned from the website. But he still saw the changing of the guard to Elon Musk as an opportunity to be welcomed back onto the social media site. Finally, free speech zone. I'm, I'm heading the right back. Free speech zone. And he's basically, basically Elon Musk is begging me to come back. There's some people call me the Elon Musk of pillows, and I think that's, I think Elon Musk would agree. The my pillow is the Tesla of pillows. Uh, yeah, so he, he was like, look, Elon Musk's in charge. I should come back. I will be welcomed with open arms, and I can now be free to spread my misinformation about election tampering with zero consequences, because that's essentially what it means. Yeah. So that's exactly what happened this past weekend as Lindell rejoined Twitter before immediately being banned once again for breaking the site's clearly defined rules. Uh, here's Insider with more. My Pillow CEO Mike Lindell was banned from Twitter on Sunday, hours after making a return to the platform. On Sunday afternoon, he posted to a new account announcing his return. Hello, everybody. I'm back on Twitter. My only account is at Mike J. Lindell. Please RT and follow to spread the word. The tweet also featured a video of Lindell confirming the account was in fact his. All those other ones are fake accounts, and they've been using my name out there, so we started this account. He said, please share with everyone you know. Let everybody you know so we can get the word out at Twitter in case they do take it down. Thanks a lot for helping out. About three and a half hours later, the account was suspended. A Twitter spokesperson told Insider the account was permanently suspended for violating the platform's rules on ban evasion. Yep. So back to frank speech, I guess. Mm -hmm. So much for Elon Musk opening the door to people who are banned. If Mike Lindell can't make it, who can? No, I was thinking more like Donald Trump, not you. Laura Loomer peeks in. Hey, uh, I heard that Twitter was back open. And she cuffs herself to the doors again. Yeah, I wonder what she thinks of all this. I don't know. She's not on Twitter. She's going to show up to a, a, a Tesla factory and... Elon, unban me! She's going to chain herself to the doors. But speaking of people who are annoying, let's check in on Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. Uh. A real power couple. What are they up to these days? Well, let's just, let's just read the most recent headlines here. Real-life vampire organizations urge caution after Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly's blood-drinking rituals go public. Mm, what? Okay, let's uh, see what this is about. Let's, uh, let's go with Billboard's reporting on the subject to find out more. Megan Fox opened up in a new interview on Tuesday to clarify why exactly she and fiancé Machine Gun Kelly drink each other's blood. 
I guess to drink each other's blood might mislead people or people are imagining us with goblets and we're like Game of Thrones drinking each other's blood. It's just a few drops. But yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes only. These people are both like 40. Why are they acting like 12 year olds who like just had their first uh, boyfriend or girlfriend? For attention. It's wild. Yeah. But like, I'm almost jealous. I'm like, it's got to feel amazing. Your wife's into witchy shit. You ever drink her blood? No. Okay. Absolutely not. But I don't know. I guess I guess we're all drinking blood now. Yeah. So. Hey, babe. <laughs> uh, so during the chat, Fox also delved into how she and her rock star fiance differ when it comes to their ritualistic practices. I'm much more controlled, she explained. I read tarot cards and I'm into astrology and I'm doing all these metaphysical practices and meditations. And I do rituals on new moons and full moons and all these things. And so when I do it, it's a passage or it's used for a reason. And it is controlled where it's like, let's shed a few drops of blood and each drink it. He's much more haphazard and hectic and chaotic where he's willing to just cut his chest open with broken glass and be like, take my soul. These are the lamest people on earth. Yeah, this is... He's like, I hate him. When, ever since he like jumped on the table at the, it's the, the record funniest label. Video. Yeah, or he's just like jamming his new song. This guy, he's credited with like, bringing pop punk into the mainstream. This guy's music is not cool enough to justify anything about his personality or lifestyle. Also, he literally changes his personality with whatever's being popular. Like, he was yeah. a rapper before this. Yeah. Um, I do not like him. He also talks shit about Slipknot, so fuck you. Uh, and yes, I mean, we are definitely giving the, at them the attention that they so desperately desire, but we also wanted to mention one more weird aspect of their relationship really quick, uh, which is that Megan Fox apparently manifested Machine Gun Kelly into existence when she was just four years old. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's Rolling Stone with more on that one. He's literally my exact physical type that I've been manifesting since I was four. I'm also four years older than him. So I think I made him. My thoughts and intentions grew him into the person that he is. Who knows what he would have looked like or been like if it wasn't for me. And I really, I, I honestly, I have no ill will towards Megan Fox. Uh, I don't know enough about her personal life to care. Um, I... I Whatever. I've she, seen her in the Transformers she, movies. She looks great. That's all I know. But I do absolutely hate Machine Gun Kelly. He is completely in insufferable. He talks shit about Slipknot. Uh, and I, I hate the fact that he's being heralded by the music industry as the guy who has either saved pop punk, brought it into the mainstream consciousness, uh, or any aspect of that. Yeah. Yeah. I so hate yeah. him, but I'm jealous. Megan? <laughs> I mean, I'm jealous in the sense that he has, like... I, I do find it like in cases where people have absolutely no self-awareness uh, awareness or care about that, where it's just, it seems like very liberating to just not give a fuck yeah. to that level. It's it's this generation's Billy Bob Thornton and uh, Angelina Jolie. Except switched because uh, Megan Fox is older. Yeah, but they, they did the blood. They had vials of each other's blood that they wore around the neck. He is literally just and rehashing they, everything from the 90s yeah, because he realizes that the 90s are now cool. Yeah. So, like, everything, nothing they're doing is really all that original. They're, yeah. they're not even the first weirdo, um, you know, full-grown adult couple who acts like uh, they're 13 years old in their first relationship. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> There's that attention you ordered. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's end today's episode with a story that's definitely uh, pretty morbid. And another shocking piece of proof that climate change will kill us all. But a story that's also completely fascinating. Now, you may or may not be aware of this, but Lake Mead, located just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, is drying up at an exceedingly rapid pace. Who would have thought that building a city in the middle of one of the driest deserts in America would be a bad idea once that city balloons to 10 times its original size mm -hmm. and therefore needs 10 times as much running water? Uh, but yeah, so it's this... This is another clear-cut case of climate change in action. It's becoming an incredibly dire situation, but it's also leading to some other upsetting discoveries that are uh, very patently old-school Vegas in nature. Yeah. Remember when Vegas was cool and the mob ran everything? Yeah, bring mm -hmm. back the mob. <laughs> we're bringing back the Vegas mob. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, people are finding barrels filled with human remains that were previously on the bottom of Lake Mead, hidden away, but are now at the shore level due to the... Well, the water's gone. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, the rapidly evaporating coastline. Yeah. Uh, as you can see in um, some very shocking and upsetting satellite images uh, that they've done around the country, uh, even here in Los Angeles and in even Northern California. But specifically Lake Mead is, is uh, it's such a weird like measuring point because of the Hoover Dam. Like they just found an intake uh, hole that where water used to rush in. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's just exposed to the open air now because there's no water there. Yeah. Anyways. So, yeah, police expect there to be plenty more barrels where those came from as the shoreline continues to uh, disappear. Uh, yeah. So here's local outlet 8 News Now with more. And, yes, there are pictures, but no, we can't show them here. Link in the description for all you morbid little they, freaks. The pictures do show everything. They show it all. They do. The body found in a barrel at Lake Mead on Sunday may have been underwater for as long as four decades, and more bodies are likely to appear as the lake recedes due to severe drought, Las Vegas Metro Police Homicide Lieutenant Ray Spencer told the 8 News Now I team. Police suspect that police suspect the person was killed in the 1980s based on personal items in the barrel, Spencer said. He would not elaborate on the person's cause of death or the items found, citing the ongoing investigation. A photo shared with the I team showed what looked like skeletal remains in the barrel. The barrel looked to have been stuck in the mud. Boaters discovered the body around 3 p.m. Sunday. The I-Team first reported the discovery on Sunday afternoon and the new details Monday. Quote, we heard a woman scream from the side of the beach, and then my husband went over to obviously see what was wrong, Shauna Hollister said. And then he realized there was a body there in a barrel. Police believe the barrel was fully intact when it was dropped into the lake. How'd they get the barrel to sink, though? Wouldn't it, a barrel with a person in it, wouldn't that float? Maybe, like, poked a hole in it? or some, some There's, rocks. like, valves on top of those things, right? got to burp them every once in a while or the yeah. nuclear waste uh, could blow it up. But I don't know. All right. The reporting continues. It's going to take an extensive amount of work, Spencer said, about identifying the victim, adding his team was reaching out to UNLV to examine growth on the barrel and when it may have started to erode. It's going to be a very difficult case, Spencer said. I would say there's a very good chance as the water level drops that we are going to find additional human remains. The area where the barrel was discovered is near the Hemingway Harbor boat ramp, Crews have had to extend the ramp hundreds of feet over the past decades to get it closer to the water. In the 1980s, what is now the beach would have been several dozen feet underwater. So if you're planning on disposing of a body... You gotta go to the middle of the You lake. gotta factor in climate change. Yeah. This you know, is like... A couple yards out, that's... No, your barrel's gonna be fully exposed. Uh, this is uh, also... There are reported cases of, like, developers who are expanding residential areas of Las Vegas. Like, when they just level an entire area of the desert that used to be just desert to start building houses there. They've yeah. apparently found human remains and had to report them like, hey, by the way, um, this thing that used to be 20 miles outside of town uh, where people were just burying bodies, uh, it's now a uh, really high class uh, luxury homes development, uh, but we found some bodies. A lot of holes out in the desert. Yeah. Uh, also, holes. this is like when uh, it's like just as morbidly fascinating as those people who go magnet fishing. And, like, they'll just be in, like, New Jersey and be like, yeah, out here magnet fishing. Oh, here's another gun. Oh, yeah. here's another gun. It's so, fascinating. Anyways, uh, if I can get it working correctly, there should be a button somewhere on the screen, either over by the suggested videos or below, where you can donate to um, uh, abortion rights. I think I can get it working. I did, like, a trial run today. So uh, we'll run that for a week. we got a goal of $5,000. We're going to put 500 in to get it started. So thank you if you can um, afford to support it um sorry these are these are tough times both financially and uh with everything going on in the world so we understand um but if uh if you just want to check out some other episodes uh we have some more episodes over here we have a recent episode of weekly weird news where uh if you're a short king you don't have to be you can extend those legs and become the tall king you always wanted to be for the mere price of seventy five thousand dollars apparently you you will in this america you will have to carry that fetus to term but you don't have to be short you can transform into a weirdly proportioned, extremely tall person. Yes. There you go. Love it uh, or leave it. Also, uh, episode of News Dump, which covers a, a bunch of stuff, including the, uh, the Vin Diesel story and uh, Twitch streamers getting the shaft. So check both of those out. Subscribe to the channel. Donate if you can, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.